Welcome to Stock Market Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Asian shares cautious as oil jumps on US strikes in Yemen. Bitcoin ETFs are here for real. Foreign investors dump Taiwan stocks ahead of election. Lion Air considers reviving $500 million Indonesian IPO, sources say. How major US stock indexes fared Thursday, 1 11, 2024. Asian shares cautious as oil jumps on US strikes in Yemen. Yahoo! Shares in Asia Pacific were cautious on Friday following the escalation of conflict in the Red Sea region, which has sent oil prices higher. The United States and Britain have begun carrying out strikes against targets linked to Houthi rebels in Yemen, after the Iran backed group attacked international ships in the Red Sea. Brent crude rose 2% to $78.95 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate, WTI, crude climbed 2.1% to $73.53. Bitcoin ETFs are here for real. Bloomberg. Bitcoin has achieved something truly remarkable, it has gained widespread acceptance as a store of value despite not fulfilling its original vision of becoming a widely used electronic cash system. People are buying Bitcoin because they believe its price will increase in the long term, not because they plan to use it for transactions. This perception of value is almost entirely self-referential and is based on the belief that other people will continue to buy Bitcoin at higher prices. In this way, Bitcoin has become a social technology that has value due to a broad market consensus. The recent approval of Bitcoin exchange-traded funds, ETFs, by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, illustrates this perception of Bitcoin as a store of value. ETFs allow investors to hold Bitcoin in their traditional brokerage accounts without needing to use it for payments. The price of Bitcoin surged in anticipation of the ETF approvals, as it was expected that more people would purchase Bitcoin as a store of value. The market reaction to the fake approval of Bitcoin ETFs was similar to the reaction when the ETFs were eventually approved, indicating that the market's perception of Bitcoin as a store of value is largely unaffected by news events. Moving forward, it is possible that Bitcoin ETFs may evolve to become more like money market instruments, lending out the Bitcoins they hold to earn interest and passing that interest along to investors. However, for now, the approved ETFs will hold the Bitcoins in custody rather than engaging in lending activities. The SEC's approval of these ETFs was somewhat grudging, and SEC Chair Gary Gensler stated that it should not be seen as a willingness to approve listing standards for crypto asset securities. The SEC remains skeptical of registered broker-dealers trading in Bitcoin. Foreign investors dump Taiwan stocks ahead of election. Nikkei Asia. Foreign investors have been selling Taiwanese stocks ahead of the island's presidential election, turning more risk-averse. In the first eight trading days of the year, foreign investors sold a net $878.56 million worth of Taiwanese equities, according to Taiwan Stock Exchange data. This follows strong foreign inflows of around $14 billion in November and December as investors expected the U.S. Federal Reserve to lower interest rates. Lion Air considers reviving $500 million Indonesian IPO, sources say. Bloomberg. PT Lion Mentari Airlines, Indonesia's largest private carrier, is considering reviving its initial public offering, IPO, in Jakarta, which could raise as much as $500 million. The airline is working with advisors on the potential offering, which could take place by the end of this year. The IPO would be a boost to Indonesia's IPO market, which saw $3.6 billion of first-time share sales last year. Lion Air had previously explored an IPO in 2019 but put the plan on hold due to the COVID-19 pandemic. $3 billion Top Asia Fund bets on Tencent again despite China gaming rules. Bloomberg. The Federated Hermes Asia X Japan Equity Fund has added Tencent holdings back to its portfolio, despite further gaming industry restrictions imposed by the Chinese government. The fund's manager, Jonathan Pines, cited Tencent's attractive valuation as the reason for the investment. Tencent's shares trade at less than 16 times forward earnings, making them appealing to Pines. He also stated that the risks of investing in China are worth taking due to the low valuations of Chinese stocks. The fund is also overweight on South Korea and prefers Samsung Electronics over Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing in the semiconductor space. Rich Indians living abroad snap up luxury homes to benefit from booming economy. Bloomberg. Wealthy Indians living abroad are investing in luxury properties in India, driving sales of top-end homes. The weak rupee, which has declined 17% against the dollar in the past three years, is giving overseas-based Indians greater purchasing power. Property prices in India have risen by up to 33% in the same period. Demand from non-resident Indians, NRIs, 
has boosted residential sales and new projects to a 10-year high, with sales of luxury and premium housing increasing by over 75% between January and September last year. Tokyo Stock Exchange regains top spot for market capitalization in Asia. Nikkei Asia. The Tokyo Stock Exchange has overtaken the Shanghai Stock Exchange as Asia's largest stock market by market capitalization. Overseas investors have returned to the Japanese market, making significant purchases of blue-chip stocks. The Nikkei stock average rose 1.8% to close at 35,049, its highest level since February 1990. Large-cap stocks, including Toyota, Sony, and Hitachi, made significant gains. The rally is partly driven by global macro hedge funds, which are placing bets based on predictions of monetary policy and economic factors. The recent weakening of the yen has also made Japanese stocks more attractive to foreign investors. Japan's Nikkei hits fresh 24-year peak, set for best week in 22 months. Yahoo! Japan's Nikkei share average reached a fresh 24-year high on Friday, heading for its best week since March 2022. The index has rallied 6.13% for the week, supported by receding bets for an end to the Bank of Japan's negative rate policy at its January meeting. Foreign investors have also returned to the market, buying a net 296.2 billion Japanese yen, $2.04 billion, of Japanese equities in the week to January 6. Bullish-looking China options trades mask lack of conviction. Bloomberg. The falling put-to-call ratio in China options data may not be an optimistic sign for the market, but rather a lack of conviction in the market's ability to rally sustainably. The ratio measures the number of bearish options outstanding relative to bullish ones, and a ratio below one suggests that investors prefer contracts betting on gains. However, it could also indicate that investors are giving up on the index after years of decline. The Hang Seng China Enterprises Index has seen four straight years of losses, and investors remain unimpressed with the level of policy support announced by China. Some analysts suggest that investors may be unwinding their downside protection as stocks decline, and instead buying calls as a substitute for long exposure to the index. China seen cutting rate, boosting cash to support economy. Bloomberg. China's central bank, the People's Bank of China, PBOC, is expected to cut its one-year policy rate and inject more liquidity into the financial system on Monday in an effort to counter deflationary pressures and boost lending. The PBOC is likely to reduce the rate on its medium-term lending facility by 10 basis points to 2.4 percent, which would be the first cut since August. It is also expected to inject a net 121 billion Chinese yuan, $16.9 billion, through the facility. The move comes as the Chinese economy continues to face challenges to growth, including weak confidence and a property slump. Bumpy prices, the Bloomberg Open, Asia edition. Bloomberg. U.S. inflation has accelerated, challenging expectations that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates soon. Loretta Mester, a member of the central bank, said that a rate reduction in March is too early and that policymakers still have work to do. Chinese prices are expected to have fallen in December for the third consecutive month, and Bloomberg Economics predicts that deflation could continue until the first half of 2024. In other news, the US and UK are expected to carry out airstrikes against Houthi positions in Yemen today, and Tesla will halt most car output at its Berlin plant due to the conflict. U.S. bank earnings are due to be reported, with J.P. Morgan, B of A, Citi, and Wells Fargo among those releasing results. EU's energy security drive may have gone too far. Reuters breaking views. Europe's rapidly growing capacity to import liquefied natural gas, LNG, is set to exceed its total gas needs by 2030, posing a risk of write-downs for LNG infrastructure projects. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Europe sought to reduce its reliance on Russian pipeline gas and identified LNG as a key part of its energy mix. The EU has since added six LNG terminals and expanded one French site, adding 36.5 billion cubic meters BCM, of regasification capacity to its network. However, if all projects currently under construction are finalized, the EU's LNG import capacity could reach almost 350 BCM by the end of the decade, while the bloc's total gas demand is expected to fall to 340 BCM. The gap between local European production and pipeline imports versus estimated demand is forecast to be around 190 BCM by 2030, which is only half the region's projected regasification capacity. The financial viability of these excess LNG terminals, many of which were funded with taxpayers' money, is therefore in question. Credit card delinquencies surpass pre-pandemic levels. CNN. 
Credit card delinquency rates in the U.S. have surpassed pre-pandemic levels for the first time, according to a report from the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. The study found that 3.19% of credit card balances were 30 days late, up from 2.76% the previous quarter, while 1.52% were 90 days or more in arrears, up from 1.32%. The report also revealed that 33.18% of accounts paid off their balance in full, the lowest share since Q4 2020. Meanwhile, outstanding credit card balances exceeded $5 trillion in November for the first time. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.